Welcome, mathletes. We are going to discuss regular polygons and their interior and exterior angles. Now, for those that may not know, regular polygons specifically mean that all sides of that particular polygon are congruent. So we might see some congruent side markings on these. So if I have a triangle that all three sides are the same, it's equilateral. And not only are all the sides congruent to each other, but all of the angles must be congruent. So you may not see the markings necessarily. So if it says it's regular, these are the markings that we can imagine that we should be seeing, right? Now, a regular quadrilateral, well, that would be a square, right? Uh, a regular pentagon, well, it doesn't really have a special name like square and equilateral triangle does, uh, but it would just be called a regular pentagon. And then as you notice, the more and more sides that we get, the N typically represents the number of sides of the polygon. The more and more sides we get, the more and more it starts to look like just a circle. And you might look at this 24-sided figure and go, I, I think that just looks more like a circle. But there's really little dimples in here. And you'll start to notice that these interior angles, they keep getting larger and larger and larger as the number of sides increase. Which means that all of the interior angles, they keep growing and growing and growing. So first, let's look at our interior angles. Now, this doesn't look like an octagon, but if you tilt your head to a 45-degree angle, either to the left or to the right, you will notice that, yeah, it does kind of look like a stop sign, right? So the interior angles, we have eight of them in an octagon because we have eight sides. So if we wanted to figure out two things here, number one, what do all of these angles add up to be? And number two, how much is each one of those angles that add up to be that total value? Well, there's a formula, which you could use the formula, but I'm not a big proponent of just saying, here's the formula, go. Uh, I really want you guys to understand what the formulas represent. So we're going to start with the basics, and then I'll show you the formula and how the formula really relates to what we are discussing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a vertex. I'm going to pick one of these vertices, and it doesn't matter which one I start at. So I'm just going to say, what if I started with this bottom vertex? And what I want to do is shoot over and touch every other vertex that goes through the inside of this regular octagon. So there's a diagonal, there's a diagonal, there's a diagonal, and there's a diagonal. Now you notice I didn't draw a, diag or a diagonal to this vertex, nor did I draw a diagonal to that vertex, because, well, that would just really be a side of the polygon. So if you notice now, what have I created by drawing in all these other diagonals? Well, I now have one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. So I have six triangles in an eight-sided figure in a regular octagon here. Now, how many degrees are there in every triangle? Well, there's 180 degrees for every triangle. So six triangles at 180 degrees each, well, that would give me, let's see, 1,080 degrees total for all eight angles, okay? Now, there's a different way we could look at this that won't give us 1080, so we'll look at it, but first let's talk about if all of these angles are 1080, how would I figure out how much each one of these angles are? Well, if all the angles are the same because it's regular, then all I would have to do is take my 1080 and split it up between eight congruent angles, and that would give me the value that I'm looking for. So, ooh, grabbing a calculator real quick, I think it's 135 if I remember correctly, but let's double check. Yeah. So each interior angle equals 135 degrees. So overall, this is 135, and this is 135. Now, when I draw in the diagonals, you know, obviously the 135 is getting split up. Is it 50-50? Not necessarily. I would say this one is 50-50, that it's, what, 67.5 each. Um, but these others aren't getting split 50-50 necessarily, okay? So this one truly is a 135-degree angle. This one over here is a 135-degree angle. Then this 135 down here gets split up one, two, three, four, five, six ways here. And again, I don't necessarily know what those six specific smaller angles are. But cumulatively together makes 135 degrees. Okay, um, so let's discuss, there's two things I want to discuss here. If I knew the number of sides, how could I figure out the number of triangles? Well, if you notice just simply here, there's always two fewer triangles than there are sides. 
Now, where is that two difference coming from? Well, how many vertices could we not draw to? Well, we couldn't draw to this one and we couldn't draw to that one. So there's our two vertices. So formula-wise, if you look in any geometry book, the sum of the interior angles of any regular polygon is the formula n minus 2 times 180, or n is the number of sides. Now, what does the n minus 2 represent? Well, if we started with eight sides and we got this six, the six represented the number of triangles. So the n minus 2 tells you how many triangles there are really inside your shape. And then why the 180? Well, each triangle has 180 degrees amongst its three angles. So this is the formula, but I want you to understand why this formula works the way it does. Now, let me show you an alternative way of figuring out the sum of all the angles. Uh, what we could do is we could pick any point in the interior of our polygon. And let's just say I pick right here. Could it be in the center? Sure. Does it make more of a point in the center? Not really. So pick a point anywhere inside, and from that point, go to all of the vertices on the outside. And so again, notice we are splitting this thing up into triangles. So you might think, oh, we're going to get the same thing. We're going to get 1080 again. But this time it's a little different, okay? Notice, whoa, that's crazy. Um, notice this time around, I don't have six triangles. I have eight triangles altogether. So if I have eight triangles, if I can draw here, eight triangles at 180 degrees each, well, geez, what does that come out to be? Why won't you let me draw an H? There we go. Uh, calculator. 8 times 180. That's 1,440 degrees total. Well, how come we're getting a different answer here? You know, if we knew the answer had to be 1080, well, how much bigger is 1440 than 1080? Well, it's an extra 360 degrees. So where is that extra 360 degrees coming from? Well, it comes from where we drew the point at. Notice we've got, oh, let me get a different color here. We have all these extra angles. These don't really represent any of the interior angles. These are the interior angles of the polygon. So whenever we pick a point inside, we create an extra circle's worth of interior angles, and we don't want those. So we could look at it this way, and we could get the 1440, but to get the correct answer, if I can get the right button here, what would we need to do with our 1440? Well, we would just need to say, hey, we need to subtract away 360 because we have an extra 360 worth of angles here. And so the true total is the 1080. So you could take the number of sides times 180 and then subtract 360. All right. Now, let me show you a little something else here. So earlier I said we could do n minus 2 times 180, but I also just said if we had the number of sides times 180, that gave us all eight triangles here, and then if we just subtract 360 because of this circle we really don't want, well, these two formulas should be the same thing, right? And they are. What do these two terms have in common? Well, they both have a factor of 180. So if I factored out 180 from both terms, well, that would go away and I'd be left with n, and then I'd have my minus sign. So if I factored out 180 from 360, that leaves me a factor of 2. So this formula and that formula truly are the same thing. One's just more of a simplified version of the other. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? I think that's the main thing I wanted to show there. Okay. On to exterior angles. Now, exterior angles, first, it's not completely the angle that makes up the rest of a circle, right? If we think about um, any vertex, if we were to make a circle going around it, I mean, here's the interior part. The exterior isn't the rest, okay? An interior plus an exterior is not 360. Uh, rather, an interior plus an exterior, so if this is what I call an exterior and this is what I would call an interior, together, an interior and exterior makes 180 degrees, really. And we're going to use that in the next piece. Um, so how would I figure out how much all of these exterior angles add up to be? So I want to show you a website. 
maybe. There it is. It's coming. And it has a really cool GIF on it, or GIF, or however you pronounce it, .gif. So I'd show that to you so you get an idea for why the answer is what it is. So watch, here's all these exterior angles. We shrink this pentagon, and notice all of the exterior angles end up making a circle. And how many degrees in a circle? 360. So there's really not a formula for this. The exterior angles of any polygon, regular or not, really, is always 360 degrees. So if you had the option between figuring out what's the sum of the interior angles and what's the sum of the exterior angles, <laughs> exterior angles all day long, the answer is always 360. It does not matter how many sides that thing's got. Okay? So sum of exterior angles. This thing will let me write nicely. Man, this thing is awesome. Come on, work with me, board. Work with me. Let's start over. A little better. Sum of exterior angles always equals 360, no matter what the shape is. So now if you think about it, what if we wanted to figure out how much, how many degrees each one of those angles represents? Well then all we would need to know is what's the sum of all of them? Well the sum of all of them is 360. And how many exterior angles do I have in a, remember this is still our octagon which has eight sides, so split up that 360 uh, eight ways, and each exterior angle is 45 degrees. Now, this also reemphasizes what I just talked about earlier. If the interior was 135 and the exterior is 45, again, there's proof right there that an interior and an exterior make 180 degrees. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you here, was that interior and exteriors together make 180. So here's another way we could come up with our formulas, okay? So the sum of the interior, that was n minus 2 times 180. Uh, we just said the sum of the exterior is always equal to 360. Um, so what we could do is, well, let's look at this. This thing's got eight sides to it, right? Uh, and how many interior, exterior angle combinations do we have in an octagon? Well, we have eight. So we have 8 times 180. Let's see, what, what is that, Mr. Calculator? 1440. So 1440 degrees for both all the interior and the exterior angles. So here's the thing. We could do this, and then let's say you forgot what the formula was, or even how to manipulate the interior angles. As long as you always remember that the sum of the exterior is 360, well, we could say if 1440 is really both the interior and exterior, subtract away all the exterior angles, and that's going to leave us with all of the interior angles, which would be the 1080. And then from there, you could figure out how much each one is at the 135. So, let's talk about this then. This kind of reemphasizes what we talked about earlier. The sum of the interior, n minus 2 times 180, plus the sum of all the exterior was 360. And I said, you know, really we have n, if you think about it, n represents our number of sides. We have n 180 degree straight lines here. So that should all be the same. If we took all the interior plus all the exterior, it's the same as the interior with the exterior put together. So n minus 2 times 180, if I Simplify that out. If I distribute the 180, I get 180 in minus 360 plus the 360 for the exterior is going to cancel that. And so that just helps to help me prove that this really is a legitimate formula, kind of both ways. Now I got two problems I want to take a look at that you will oftentimes see in math team problems. Uh, it says the sum of the interior angles of a regular polygon is 4320. How many sides does it have? So this is more of a Jeopardy style problem where I'm giving you the answer, I kind of want to know the backwards part. Well, we've got the formula n minus 2 times 180, but we don't know what n is. But we know the answer, we know the answer's got to be 4320. So let's think of it this way. We can think of it algebraically and kind of geometrically here. So this was the formula to get all the interior, and we know it's got to be this. So algebraically, what would we do here? Well, we could divide the 180 over, okay. So then we'll have the n minus 2. 
equals, let's see, 4320 divided by 180 is 24. And so then I would add the 2 over, and hey, I really have a 26-sided regular polygon. Now that's how we could look at it purely algebraically, without any thought of what this means geometrically. So let's go back and discuss that then. And we'll still get the same answer. Now, I mentioned earlier the n minus 2 geometrically really represents the number of triangles, and that each triangle represented the 180 degrees. So what we could do is, if we know we have some like really big shape that has 4,320 degrees to it, we can think of, well, how many, how many triangles are in 4,320 degrees, right? So when we divide the 180 over, we're really finding out, because we get the n minus 2, uh, I can't remember, what was that, 24. So the n minus 2, again, means the number of triangles, which means we have 24 triangles in this shape. And the relationship always between the number of sides of the shape and the number of triangles within it, the number of triangles was always two fewer. So if you know you have 24 triangles, you add two sides to it, and so we truly have a 26-sided shape. Okay, I get more out of this if I try to think about it geometrically, uh, more so than just you know plug and chug an algebra problem. All right, the last one we're going to take a look at here is, is if each interior angle of a regular polygon is 156 degrees, how many sides does it have? Now, we're going to look at this two different ways, and you will quickly see out of those two ways which one you will probably want to do. Now, if each angle is 156, and we don't know how many sides it's got, so let's call the number of sides n, okay? Uh, so we can have the n minus 2 times 180. That gave us all of the angles, right? Um, but we don't know what the sum is, right? We don't know how many 156 degree interior angles we have. Um, but if we knew what the total number was, then we would divide that by the number of sides, and that would give us the per angle basis, right? Again, this represented the total, and then this is going to break it down in a per angle. So if I took the total and divided by how many sides I had, that would tell me that I have 156 degrees per interior angle. So again, we can look at this purely geom or algebraically. Uh, I could multiply both sides by n, and so then I have n minus 2 times 180 equals 156n. And then I can distribute the 180 and get 180n minus 360 equals 156n. Uh, I'm going to move the 180 in over, and I'm going to end up with a couple negatives. So negative 360 equals, what, negative 24 in. Divide both sides by negative 24. And so we end up with a shape that is 360 divided by 24, 15 sides. So I really have a regular 15-sided polygon. Um, so that's one way of looking at this. The other way, which is honestly easier, is you just have to remember one little thing about interior and exterior angles. Okay, so if I've got some big shape here and I know each interior angle is 156 degrees, remember that exterior angle that would kind of come off of it. Could we figure out how big that exterior angle is? Yeah, remember we said that those added up to be 180. So 180 minus 156 is what, 24 degrees? So we know each exterior angle is 24 degrees. Now, you might ask, why do we want to go with the exterior? Well, what was the sum of all the exterior angles of any regular polygon, or any polygon, really? It was 360. So that means I have 24 degree exterior angles, and they have to max out at 360 degrees. So how many of these 24 degree angles can I get out of 360 degrees? I can get 15 of them. So there's a lot less math involved if you want to convert your interior angles to exterior angles, because you always know, again, what the sum of the exterior angles will be. Now, that is all for this video. Hope you guys learned something. We'll see you next time.